I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In our last video in our nutrient series, we talked about how to set up and use a carbon source for exporting nutrients out of your tank. Now, if you haven't watched the other videos in the series, make sure you go back and watch them because we're going to talk about some things tonight that build on what we've taught you over the past couple of weeks. Now, all the videos are right here in the nutrient video series, so you can watch the playlist and get caught up to speed. Now today, I'm going to sit down with Dr. Tim and ask him some common mistakes about carbon dosing and adding a solid carbon source to your tank, as well as break apart some myths around using this type of nutrient export for your aquarium. Dr. Tim, what happens if you overdose a carbon source? First, you're going to get a bacterial bloom, and then what you're do going to do is get a cyanobacteria bloom more than likely. You know, people don't realize that that carbon dosing is be going to feed, it can feed everything. It can feed dinoflagellates, it can feed cyanobacteria, and it can feed the pelagic bacteria, the bacteria that are in the water that we want to export. And more than likely, if you over carbon dose, you're going to end up with a lot of cyanobacteria because they can uh, feed on organics. So if I start liquid carbon dosing my tank or add in a solid carbon source, and then I see a cyano outbreak, I should up my nutrient export, whether that be bigger water changes, better skimmer or bigger skimmer, and that should help the cyano go away. And reduce the amount of carbon that you're adding. Also, look at your, or siphon clean your substrate and underneath your uh, coral work and stuff like that. All that organic material, once you start carbon dosing, the bacteria can be feeding on that and that will stimulate, the cyanobacteria will start feeding on that. If you have a little, little bit of cyano and you carbon dose, you're feeding the cyano. So can you overdose bio pellets? Oh yeah, you can definitely overdose the bio pellets, just like everything else. So it'd be, you know, too much because if you grow the, grow the bacteria to the point that, and this is, gets back to one of your questions about, can you do ultra low with a refugi? And my answer is no, but you can with bacteria because if you have an overwhelming amount of bio pellets, carbon now is not limited. And the bacteria then can start removing nitrates and phosphates, and they can definitely bring those both down to super low levels. And that's when you're going to start probably growing your, your uh, dinoflagellates. What about turning off your bio pellet reactor for some part of the day? But what will happen in a bio pellet is you turn the water off, and that water sitting there with the bio pellet, the bacteria will consume all the oxygen. Then they'll, if there's any nitrate in there, they'll, they'll use that nitrate as energy and they're going to produce uh, nitrogen gas. But what, what's going to happen is that it's going to make the system anaerobic. And when you turn the water on, you're going to put a bunch of bad water in. Then the other thing is, you know, people come to me at these shows, I've got a bio pellet, I've got a refugia, I've got the roller thing. They've got everything on the system and they're going none of it's working well of course none of it's working because you've got everything fighting with it with its with, with its each other so what i tell people pick a system what's what can you maintain because that's important if you can't maintain the refugia don't get one you know don't get an expensive filter if you can't maintain it but pick one tool and work with that in your system don't get, have this urge to put everything on there because I read this, I read that, I read that, I'm going to put it all in. That's a recipe for failure, repeated failure and frustration. That's what I refer to as confused tank syndrome. Yeah, the, the tank, they're all fighting each other, so nothing's working well. And then people get frustrated, but it's like you gave none of those a chance. Each one of them has a, maybe a benef you know, benefit, but you gave none of them a chance. Some people say you shouldn't use UV while you're adding a carbon source to your tank. What do you think about that? You can still have your UV. Some people, you know, bio pellets can be very popular on uh, fish only systems where people have a lot of fish, like at doctor's offices. I don't understand these doctors where they're feeding literally pounds of food a day and lights are on a lot and the tank looks like 
you know, crap with algae, and they, they add a bio pellet reactor and they can control that and still have a UV because a lot of times they want UV to cut down on diseases. If you have a UV, you're killing the bacteria in the water, but it's not affecting the bacteria in the pellet reactor. So if you're running bio pellets and you're running UV, you don't have any concerns about that? No. But the bacteria on the bio pellet is getting sloughed off and going into your system. Wouldn't the UV then kill it when it's in the water column? Well, you either get a really good coral food to your system or you've, you've got a skimmer. Right? You, know, I, you have a skimmer in the system and so that's being removed. Even if the UV zaps it, that's dead organic material, the, the corals will eat it or it'll still be removed. I've talked to hobbyists who say they've tried bio pellets or liquid carbon dosing and it stripped down their system, made their system ultra low nutrients, and then some of their corals bleached. Do you think that's because they added too much liquid carbon dose or too much bio pellets? Pro probably. They just went, you know, the, the natural tendency is more is better. You know, it's just, no, nobody goes, I'm going to limit this. Now they, they yeah, uh, used a lot. Thanks, Dr. Tim, for being my wingman on this nutrient and nutrient export series. I appreciate all the input, certainly the insights you've given to me and my clients tanks over the system, and I look forward to what's next. Now, again, if you're just tuning into this video series, make sure you go back and watch the previous episodes. If you just watch this episodes, you're likely to do something wrong and have a bad experience with nutrient export in your tank with a carbon source. So again, watch them all. It's in the nutrient playlist here so you can get up to speed. Till next time, I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode and in the next video series. Mm -hmm.